we're reviewing this Ferrari 360 Spider that's been heavily customized to look, perform and sound like a 360 Challenge Stradale. When we were offered this 360 for review, it got me thinking. With an OEM right-hand drive Challenge Stradale costing around £230,000 in the current marketplace, whereas a standard 360 customized to Challenge Stradale specification costing around £80,000, is an OEM Challenge Stradale really worth £150,000 more than a standard 360 customised to Challenge Stradale specification? Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bolsworth Castle in Cheshire. The Ferrari 360 was in production from 1999 to 2004, so that's for around five years. This particular 360 Spider has been heavily customised to challenge Stradale's specification, which includes changes to the external bodywork and to engine and transmission mappings. First of all, I'm going to take you for a walk around the external to show you the body panels that have been uplifted. And then we're going to talk about the engine management changes. And then we're going to take it out on the road and see how it compares in driving to a challenge Stradale. So talking about the external bodywork, this car now has the front Challenge Stradale bumper, side skirts and rear bumper. And I should say that this car is actually black. So it came out of the factory black. This car has now got a full red PPF wrap on it. So the standard color is black. So moving to the engine compartment. The Ferrari 360 replaces the much-loved Ferrari 355 and is itself superseded by the Ferrari 430. The main improvements made to the Ferrari 360 over and above the 355 are, of course, the body changes, the restyling, and the inclusion of an aluminium space frame. This aluminium space frame provides 28% lighter so it's a 28 percent weight reduction when compared to the steel chassis of the 355 and is 40 percent stiffer the performance metrics of the 360 of the standard 360 are 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v8 pushing out around 390 brake horsepower and 275 pound foot of torque it will take you from 0 to 62 in 4.6 seconds and a top speed of 180 miles per hour. Now, this has been heavily customized, so it's got a stage two ECU remapping for the engine. So we reckon that this will now take it to around the brake horsepower of a Challenge Stradale, which is around 420 brake horsepower. Also, I believe that the pound foot of torque will also be increased to around 285, possibly 290 around those sort of areas. And in driving it here, I can definitely feel those improvements in performance. In addition to a stage two engine remap to bring it up to Challenge Stradale specification, it also has a transmission unit remap as well. That means in effect, the ECU that controls the F1 gearbox because this is a robotized F1 gearbox. It's not a manual. And in effect, these initial single plate robotized gearboxes were very much like the original manual gearboxes, but they had a robotized hydraulic system that actuated the clutch and gear mechanism. So you have to be very careful how you drive it. You have to drop back from accelerating when you change gear because you have to have it in your head that it's a single normal single plate clutch that you're actuating. It's not a dual clutch transmission. This 360 also has a full Challenge Stradale exhaust system, which includes Challenge Stradale Sports Cats. This 360 also has some hidden upgrades, but we'll talk through those upgrades when we take it out on the road and see how it compares in driving to a real Challenge Stradale. So the first thing you notice when driving an F1 Gearbox 360 is that it's very lurchy at slow speeds because this is in effect a robotized manual gearbox. It's very different to the modern dual clutch transmissions. 
even when compared to the latest edition of this robotized F1 gearbox system, which was evident in the 430 Scuderia, it's still very, very clunky. Still very, very clunky at low speeds. And you should pause on the accelerator before you change gear, before you pull another gear on the paddle shift. That's the proper way to drive a robotized F1 style gearbox. Now one of the additional customized options that this car has got, one of these secret custom options, is it's got a manual switch for the exhaust. So whereas I'm driving it now at slow speeds, if I now flick the switch, it opens the valves all the way through. So the valves are open all the time now. And remember, this is a challenge to the daily exhaust system with Capristo Sports Cats. So it's pretty loud. You don't want it drony like that all the time you're driving it, but for having fun, for sure you want it like that. Now I'm gonna close my mouth a bit. I'm gonna shut up and let's just listen to the sound of this car. like a challenge to Dali. <laughs> Having driven the challenge to Dali before, I would say that it's actually more powerful than the challenge to Dali. Or I've forgotten what a challenge to Dali was like, what an OEM challenge to Dali was like, but this seems more powerful. And it's very lurchy and very juddery at slow speeds, but once you get on it, the performance really comes on song. Remember the, ch the standard performance of this car is 0 to 62 in 4.6 seconds. I reckon it's quite a bit faster than that. I reckon we're looking at around challenge to Dali speeds of around four, 4.1 seconds. So probably around the four seconds for 0 to 62. Top speed is supposed to be around 180 and it's probably about the same, around 180 to 185 miles per hour. is it does provide better engagement. Some of the dual clutch transmissions are too seamless, especially in Porsches. They're too seamless, they're too good. Um, if you compare it, for example, to the Pista DCT, the Pista DCT, DCT is so fast in engaging new cogs, it removes some of the engagement, whereas this F1 old style robotized gearbox provides you that shove in the back, that it provides you with that, that engagement that you need from a supercar. in the back and it makes it more enthralling it actually makes you feel like you're going faster it's what you want it's part of the engagement you want from driving a supercar it's very important though to remember that this car was in production from 1999 
So it's very much a car of its era. The first F1 gearbox was incorporated into the Ferrari 355 and it was super clunky and nobody really wanted it. Nobody really wants an F1 355. Everybody goes for the manual. And pretty much it's the same for the 360. There was very few manuals that are actually developed because most people wanted the F1 gearbox because it was the new hip thing. But most people nowadays, of course, want the manual. But it is very engaging. The F1 gearbox, if you drive it correctly, it is quite engaging, especially on a car of this nature. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. While we're in this particular slow spot, I'll go through some of the internal cabin ergonomics. You've got the reverse gear is actuated by pulling on this lever, pulling it up and back and that engaged reverse gear. You've got to be very careful when you engage reverse gear to make sure it has actually engaged before you put your foot on the accelerator. And remembering again that this is a robotized gearbox so it's a very clunky hydraulic system that engages the cogs. With regards to the internal switch gear, it's very much a, a car of its era. You've got an old style climate control, you've got control knob here for the different temperature, you've got the fan speed on the right and you've got the direction for the climate control on the left hand side. This particular car has got an upgraded Pioneer stereo system so we won't talk much about that. The vent controls are these circular systems where you, you, you twist them round to turn them on and off and you've got the fins where you can direct manually. Um, no carbon fibre in the internal cabin here. What you have got though is an aluminium encased dial cluster and you've got front and foremost your rev counter and then to the right of that you've got your speedo and then you've got your clock and other ancillary fuel etc gauges on the left hand side. The steering wheel provides easy access to gain visibility of those at a good seating position. And while we're talking about that, the seating position is actually very good. This particular 360 has the carbon bucket seats and although they're not adjustable for rake going um, on the back part of the, of the headrest section, they are actually very comfortable. They cost at you, they hold you at the kidneys level but not aggressively. So it's actually a very comfortable position. And although personally I would like the seat a little bit higher because I'm long in my legs but short in my body, so all my height really is in my legs. It's actually a very good driving position. So um, these bucket seats are very, very good. And I would recommend these bucket seats being preferential. They just come into a nice straight section. So I'll shut up and let you hear the car. century of the late 1990s but it's got some go in it still it's still 180 mile per hour car and like I say this will probably accelerate 0 to 62 in around four seconds now with the stage 2 map that it has with the challenge to daily stage 2 map and also remembering that this has got the the gearbox map as well of the challenge to Dali so it's both of those sections have been uplifted slouch at all especially when you're overtaking you've got that power there this car definitely comes on song with spirited driving it's clunky and not very maneuverable and a bit sluggish when you're driving it really slowly you start punching it towards 6,000 revs and above and it really comes alive now this car red lines at 8,500 so you've got to be careful that you don't hit that red line too early is resplendent in leather, black leather across the top dashboard section and the lower section is beige, is tan, which is very, very standard and very much a good spec for these 360s and quite common actually that they're in, that the internal colorway was, was black over tan. It's important to remember as well that this car has a full red PPF wrap 
the standard external bodywork color for this is Nero. It's black. So it's actually a black car over a tan and black interior. So that black colorway coming from the outside in makes a lot more sense when you know and when you remember that the external bodywork is indeed black. Now one of the negatives of the interior that is important for me to mention and I noticed this straight away is that the driving position, your, the footwell is slightly skewed to the left which is quite common for some of the early Ferraris. And in addition to that, the footwell is very cramped, especially the distance between the, the accelerator and the brake. My foot is always catching on the brake on the accelerator. I have to have my foot very, very vertical to make sure that it doesn't catch the brake as well. And I'm wearing Pilotti driving shoes, so it's not like I'm wearing big, thick shoes. And yes, I do have quite wide feet, um, size 10 and a half, but a wide fitting. But, it, but it's very noticeable that I have to keep my foot on the accelerator very vertical in a straight line. steering is quite light but it turns in very well and at the moment at the moment I'm not really feeling the understeer that a lot of people talk about with regards to 360s although I suspect if I pushed it really hard it would tend to understeer rather than oversteer although you can't really compare the 360s with a modern Ferrari you can see there that the steering isn't really anywhere near as fast as some of the later Ferrari supercars and this is what you'd expect really for the 355 and the 360 models it's not really slow but it it means that you've got to cross your hands if you're coming up to a sharp turning but for most corners you can pretty much keep your hands in the 10 to 2 position Now the second hidden customization feature that this particular 360 has is it has a bumpy road mode. So when the customizations were made, the owner asked for a, a, a softening of the suspension to be put in place. In effect, when the car's in sport mode, you have a, a little switch to the left of the, of the exhaust switch of the exhaust valve switch and this switch automatically switches the suspension to a softer version and it makes it a lot more compliant however we've been driving it in the sports suspension mode and we found it to be great and this is quite undulating these road sections so I wouldn't say you necessarily need that bumpy road mode but you've got it there if you want to so that's pretty cool you've got a 360 that's got a bumpy road mode quite a good idea The brakes are very confidence inspiring as well. Even though they're not challenged to daily brakes, they're not the carbon ceramics, they are very, very good. And I know that the brake pads have been uplifted to a better compound so that are a lot more grippy. And you can really notice it. It really inspires confidence that you're going to be able to haul the car down at the impressive speeds that this picks up. shows you that these old Ferraris, these 360s and possibly the 355s as well, they have a lot to give, especially if you do a few upgrades like this one's got to the management systems for the engine and the gearbox. You can really bring it back to a modern-like style performance specification. So in my opinion, is a Challenge Stradale worth £150,000 more than it costs to uplift a standard 360 to Challenge Stradale specification? unless you particularly wanted that Vergiani Speciale Challenge Stradale, I would say no, to be honest. Challenge Stradales are getting really pricey now. £230,000 is a hell of a price to pay for a 1999 Vergiani Speciale. 